in today's program, Art of Making. Tips for Soutache Technique How to make cheese Bright and original hats of Seva Demidov Rich palette of paints, luxury of natural stones, gloss of crystals and the framing of silky loops. That is all about unique and surprisingly attractive soutache. Today we will share secrets of an old technique and will make an unusual brush. So let's start. First we will fix the central stone on the lining made of felt or leather. It can be both glued or sewed if there are holes in it. Now we take the loop and start framing the stone. It looks like this. It can be different in width and thickness. This one is the thinnest, two millimeters. Jewelry looks very delicate. It's not silk, it's cotton. And it produces good patterns. They don't lose shape. We will now make this pattern of an oriental cucumber. We fold it. We always need to adjust it with fingers. Now we will fix the tip so that it doesn't stay fluffy. The basic principle in the creation of jewelry is the usage of large stone the emphasis on proportions. By the size of the bead I make stitches. We are ready to place the bead here. We make short loops. This is the edge we have to close like this in overlap. So we need to look at how many stitches we need to do. Sometimes needles break when they cannot pierce the thickness of the soutache. Now I'm going to make another stitch. That's how I pulled it. Now it needs to be sewn through vertically, so that it's fixed. And here I lay the soutache tape. Then it will not be visible from this side when we get between the tape. That's all. Here what it looks like. Next we make a form of a drop. Of course, because it's hard, it's not possible to sew it immediately, as many do. So I do this balanced, then I sew it around the stone separately. I try it on every step. I see where I need to make a turn and see where else I need to sew. The soutache technique originated in France in the early 14th century. Soutache items were used to decorate women's dresses and accessories. Dutch masters also made a great contribution to the development of this technology. Subsequently, the soutache technique lost its form of fame, and in the early 1990s it regained its popularity. This kind of art was revived by the world-famous masters of soutache jewelry from Israel, Mikhail Negrin and Dori Chingeri. Как 
каждый мастер, у него есть свои <laughs> интересные какие-то свои фишки. Each craftsman has its own interesting tips that appear in the process of making jewelry. Этот процесс не такой уж и быстрый. This is not a fast process. It takes me about a week to complete one set. На комплект у меня уходит неделя где-то. Здесь есть посередине сутажные тесьмы. There is such a groove in the middle of the tape. Here it is. That's where we put the needle in. There are two rollers that are braided with a thread. It's the only space where a needle can pass between them. Только между ними может пройти иголка. The Sutage jewelry looks large, but actually it's very light. Many people think this jewelry is made of leather. On the back of the finished brush, it's necessary to attach a pin or a clasp. These all are sold in stores, or it can be ordered online. All right, now we're looking what we can sew it on, right here. Now we take a piece of the felt which we're going to sew it on. Then we stick this piece to the base. That's how it glues and has to dry. When jewelry is almost ready, it's necessary to take care of the lining. It's the main part, which is responsible for elegant jewel. Apply the template to the piece of felt. Make a contour of the jewel. Now we have to cut it through. You can use nail scissors. That's how we can make it. We're going to glue it all. Here where the beads are, we must fix with needles. I usually fix with safety pin, and it will stick. As it dries, we will remove the needles, and we get this kind of brush. A well-chosen soutage jewel will always look great on clothes and emphasize your style. As the legendary Coco Chanel said, start your collection of jewelry from the brushes, because brush is a multifunctional and flexible accessory. Kazakhs, like many other nomadic people, were engaged in animal husbandry. The way of life and living conditions influenced the formation of national cuisine. The nomadic diet mainly consisted of meat and dairy products. Iran, Eremshik, Kurt, which we love to this day, are milk products. The experience of nomadic ancestors inspired Anel Stambekova and Shulpan Dajiyakova to open their own production of homemade cheese. First of all, we came up with this idea because we are all mothers and the main thing is to feed children with useful and natural products. And the desire to do something particularly in Kazakhstan also played an important role. The main difficulty was in finding raw suitable milk. So to search for raw milk, its delivery and proper storage, that was a little difficult for us. But we found good suppliers. Good milk is the basis of cheese products. 
Cheesemakers say that there are a lot of factors that influence the taste and quality of future cheeses. Молоко, конечно, такое, ну, это продукт, из которого можно изготавливать бесконечное количество. Milk is a product from which you can make an endless amount of products. For example, for one type of product we take morning milk, for another evening milk, because the same cow can give milk of different fat content. It depends on the season. Let's say during the mid-season, spring, autumn, it's impossible to make some types of cheese from this milk. We can use steamed milk. We need to take the chilled one. After the milk is cooled to a certain temperature, certain unnecessary dairy ferments will be gone. Then chilled milk is brought here. After the milk is brought to the cheese factory, the first stage of production begins. We pour milk into the cheese boiler, bring it to a certain temperature and add ferments. Then the cheese ring matures. It must lie down for some time to release excess fluid. In general, the cheese production cycle is quite long. The cheese fills the mood and any violation of the technological process, so we must withstand the cheese mass. It's called filata paste. After fermentation, the cheese mass goes through the next stage of the production chain. We hit the water to 80, 90 degrees, and in this water we melt filata paste. This is how we get mozzarella. And in order to get burrata cheese, we pour cheese mass called stracciatella into the same cheese paste. When I first tried Kraft cheese, I was curious how this gentle, tasty mass appears in the burrata pouch. And halloumi is a cheese which is very popular for picnics because it's delicious exactly when it's fried in an open fire on a grill. It has a very interesting taste. The cheese mass obtained during the heat treatment allows us to experiment and create cheeses of different tastes and shapes. The bulk of the work is done manually, at home. Now we produce more soft and semi-soft cheeses. Why? Because they are traditionally close to us. Our ancestors produced them in this way, all at home. I run Ermshik. This is all that we are used to since childhood. The same chevre is the same mini court. They are the middle product in the production of the curd. Then this cheese is enriched with various herbs, oils, and we get such an interesting, but already completely different product. Anel and Chopin say that the production of cheese is the work to which they devote not only all their time but also put their entire soul, because only in this way the cheese will turn out to be of high quality and beneficial to consumers. We hope someday in every home there will be the right dairy products, which will not only nourish and bring pleasure, but also bring health benefits. And our slogan is, with love to every house.
Hairdressers have been familiar to mankind since time immemorial, and the attitude towards them has always been special. From century to century, they reincarnated, changed shape and style of hats, which became an important part of the wardrobe of men and women. Typically, hatters, waxers, casters, seamstresses, calligraphers, designers and others worked on the creation of hats. Today we will visit the hat maker, decorator, designer, in a word, a real magician who easily turns an ordinary item into a unique one. I'm close to the culture where I live. I live in Kazakhstan. However, I was born in Baku, Azerbaijan. Probably due to the fact that I was born by the sea, there are a lot of fish, ships in my work. I visited places where troglyphs are depicted on the rock surfaces. I'm not interested in copying some things. I always have improvisation. I do like to use culture of different nations, Slavic, Indian and African. I never work with sketches. Paper and pencil are familiar to me, of course, but I don't draw hats. It's the kind of process when you are carried away with the flow. It's important not to have any thoughts at the moment of making, not to be fixed on them and just watch what your hands are doing. I draw such a human and non-human-like ships, and fish, and human-like creatures. In general, it's an image of them dancing around the head. Basically, the first stage of the work on this hat is completed. I made a textural drawing, now silicon will dry. Of course, this color is not beautiful, not elegant, but here was the main goal to reach the texture and image. Then I will cover it with paint. Designer says that he chooses his ideas by intuition. And covered with simple figures, the upper part of the hat will be paint next. Now we take paint. I put two layers. The first is the primer. It doesn't matter which color to use because after black color, I will cover it with silver and gold. After the primer dries, the pattern is treated with silver. And the upper part of the cat, covered with plain figures, will be painted at the next stage. Now is the final stage of our process, when we have covered our relief image first with black acrylic, then silver, and now, to give it a noble vintage look, we cover it with manganese solution. Now, while it's still wet, it's hard to see what it will look like, but there is an oxidation reaction, and the shining silver is beginning to become a noble platinum. As if it's a very old thing, it's an ancient thing, as if it was made many centuries ago and it has a history. This hat was worn by many people, and it was passed down from one generation to another, you know, like a family relic.
Sticking to the plan, the designer does not stop fantasizing. For example, he can give the hat a look of the pork pie hat, using rivets, spikes, bird feathers, vintage beads, buttons, bright brush and other materials. They are the most common ones in designers' collections, in various combinations and colors. I can use a wide range of drawing tools. It can be both buttons and some tapes and even colored crayons and coins. I can fix them around the hat. In general, I think that everything that comes to you in life comes to you not just by pure accident. It can help you reveal your artistic talent, depending on the situation. I do love to use organic materials. I have minimal plastics. I always use wood, metal, fabric and furs. In general, I'm interested in the culture of different nations. First of all, Turkic. So female headgears often contain appropriate decorative elements. I said that improvisation is very important to me. I do not copy traditions, but I take them as a basis and supplement them. This gear is, for example, symbols of our today's life, so I get some kind of interesting mix, and it's both ethnic and something man-made. And two different things get mixed up, and we get a new life and a new quality. There are simple keys from our life. Here they acquire artistic quality. So to find out who you are, you need to try something different. Open different doors with different keys. Whoever seeks will always find what they're looking for. A treasured well will be found, so to speak, and the door will open. And you will be happy. I believe in it. Each hat of the master is a masterpiece of fantasy and professionalism. Mysterious hats create magic, the atmosphere of a fairy tale. And the organic use of decorating materials is just a bright accent. I think this is what determines the magic. You haven't found a wizard without a hat. It's very important. A hat is an essential attribute of a wizard. In fact, it's made of clothesline. Here it starts, it sticks together like this and glued. There's a tab here, you can open it if you want. And of course, it's a festive thing, because I have set a garland here. Imagine walking around the city wearing this hat. The master says that he creates only at the behest of the heart and complete freedom of creativity changes the mood of people, makes them love more. And most of the master's work amazed with a variety of designs and virtuoso execution. <laughs>